Hi, hello and welcome to this short discussion on DaVinci Resolve's interface, particularly the interface in the edit mode. I'm using uh, the new release of 18.1. Most of the things I'll discuss is about previous versions, but there's also one little nice little uh, useful full screen view that you can now use within 18.1 and hopefully it'll be useful to some people out there. It's very basic as all my stuff is at the moment and I'm on the learning curve so forgive me if I've got anything wrong. I'm doing my best at the moment and hopefully eventually over many months and years I'll get there. So let's go over now to the screen and have a look at what I want to show you. Okay, so let's have a look at the screen and what I would call the screen real estate. That is going to be a function of how DaVinci Resolve Studio organizes the screen will be a function of the resolution of that screen. And in this particular case, I'm using a 1K screen, which is 1920 by 1080. The different size screens will organize each, each view in a way that is suitable for the um, the task that you wish to undertake uh, in terms of the resolution that's available. Be aware that you can change the look of this. So if I want the inspector here, it will bring the inspector down, but it will actually lose uh, this element of having both the uh, preview um, and the timeline, the playback view as well too. Same with metadata and mixer. So you can, mixer will reduce the overall um, timeline available there as will the media pool and other elements so it's up to you to actually go down whichever path that suits you in terms of the the comfort of being able to get as much real estate real estate as necessary i've played most things off here now and i just want to um concentrate on the timeline to show you a couple of timeline issues if you wish to um if you used to preserve this, you can actually save the actual screen layout. So if I go to layout presets here, I can go to save this preset and I can give that a name and I, I, I'm able to recall that preset once I've saved it or I can return to the default preset. So you can save multiple presets if you wish to do so. Let me run with this, and but just be aware that it is bespoke in any way, shape, or form. And that's true for almost all Windows software. You can, the UI, the user interface, you can control as much as you want, usually. So let's do a couple of things here. First of all, you've got, you've got sort of on the timeline, you've got the ability on the timeline to actually change the look of this. So for example, if I want to go to this icon here, which is the timeline view options, I can set the video options to, this first one is the, um, the film strip view, if you want to use that. Um, this particular view here is the thumbnail view and this one here is the simple view. So you can change those uh, to whatever suits you in terms of what view you want to have that. Similarly with the audio view, this is the uh, the non-rectified waveform. This would be the full waveform if you wish to display that. And this will be the, um, the waveform border. Not sure what that is to be honest with you, so I'll leave that for you to sort out. You can change the heights of the individual tracks here, so you can increase the size of them by just doing that. Uh, and also the same with the audio track. So it gives you that ability to um, size that in accordance with what you're comfortable with in order to be able to use that. And uh, that is actually quite useful. So the next thing I want to demonstrate is a new function within um, DaVinci Resolve. And this is new to um, DaVinci Resolve 18.1. And that will allow you to insert. Um, so if I want to insert, if I right click here, I can add a track here. And it actually allows me to define where that track goes. So um, there's vid you can work with both video and audio tracks or you can work separately. So at the moment now, if I, I can decide whether to insert that above uh, two, at the moment there are only two tracks, or uh, below, uh, below two. So I can place it in any, depending on how many tracks you've got stack up, stacked up, then you can, um, you can stack up as many. I'm going to stack it below the first track. Um, and similarly with the with this one here below the first track and I'll add the tracks and as you can see it's created a gap in the tracks uh, and you can see if I go up and down you'll see it's left a space on the base track if you want to do that so that, that makes it easier for it to manage 
um, placing layers on tracks which might be useful both for well particularly for video and possibly for audio but that's that's really a, a different uh, a different altogether you've also got the traditional views you can change here this is not new this is these have been there around with uh, 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 da Vinci resolve before 18.1 so this view here is the is essentially the uh, the full extent of the timeline so no matter how big this timeline it will actually uh, stretch to that full timeline if I go to here that will zoom in on the playhead and give you a detailed view of the playhead and you've got this bespoke view which is a function of how you set this so if I set the, the, that to be say that then it will always return to that one. So if I go to the detail view, I can return to that view. So it gives you the option to have whatever view you want to work with and whatever suitable for the size of your, your project uh, timeline. And, and that's actually quite useful. And I think all those things are, are very, uh, very nice for you to be able to handle what's happening within the timeline. One further one, further one um, which I think is new to 18.1, I'm not sure, but I think it is. And that's actually the full, the, the full, view, the full, full screen view. So if I hit control F, it'll switch to the full view. And if I hit control F again, it'll swap back to the timeline. That's new and that's quite handy. That's very handy if, you, if you've just got one monitor. If you've got two monitors, uh, you can actually just uh, place if you if you have two monitors you can go to so we get out the workspace here you can go into view clean feed and if you've got a second or third monitor you can point to that and it will take the full view of your clean feed to that monitor so if you want to have what's going on your timeline and going within your edit uh, when you're editing within any of the windows it will place the full view of that on your other monitor obviously I can't show that here so I think that's all I want to cover on that it's it's a it's very flexible and it's it's getting more flexible all the time it was one of the f one of the weaknesses I thought of DaVinci Resolve moving from um um from Adobe Premiere, it, it had more, I think, more capability in, in organizing the, the screen, but this is getting better all the time. As it always is with uh, DaVinci da Resolve, it keeps adding wonderful little bits and pieces. So I'll leave it there and I hope that's been useful. And thanks for staying to the end if you stay to the end and you guys look after yourselves and take care and bye for now.